Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. Today we've got another Conquest release. I finally got a hold of the Hold Warriors. <laughs> yeah, terrible pun, but whatever. Anyway, the Dwegham, which are the kind of dwarven counterparts to Parabellum's Conquest game. The Hold Warriors are the first of their dual kits, which allow you to build them as either Ballistae or good old-fashioned Hold Warriors, which old weapons. No, it's just like the typical mind dwarf. So you've got an example of one of their ballistae guys there. They have little hand crossbows. And then you can see the typical sword and board style warriors up there as well. Now, being that you get a dual kit and you only get 12 models per box, more than likely I'm going to end up doing a 6 and 6 or maybe a 4 and 8. I haven't decided yet. Okay, every Parabellum Conquest box set of infantry has these bases. You have three stands of models, and of course you have the regular round bases to attach them to. You have a command sprue, and I gotta say the command sprues have been pretty cool so far, at least in my experience. Uh, you got this big huge polearm looking standard, and I'm gonna have to go online and see what needs to go where, because I don't even know. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple of different helmets. So you've got these weird technological looking parts here, whereas you still have some good old dour faced dwarven warrior types as well. You've got, I want to say this is probably like a custom crossbow. You have your commander hack and blade mohawk for the helmets. I don't know if there's any special placement of those shoulder pads. We'll take a look. So this one, honestly, you're going to have to go look online at the directions because I don't even know myself how this is all supposed to go together. My understanding, and I'm going to play around with this, but based on previous experience with these models from Parabellum, a lot of times the bodies all match up a certain way, but then all of the heads and hands are completely modular and you have your choice. Thankfully, these guys look a lot cleaner than my Flame Berserkers. Those guys had some serious flash that needed cleaning. How many heads do we have as I ramble on here? One, two, three, four, five. Five heads. And how many sprues? Oh, no, we have a couple of different sprues. That's interesting. Okay, so we got two of each sprue. This is the first sprue. You can see we have a lot of the crossbows and the hand weapons here. Um, I don't think there's any big difference in the faces. I know sometimes they have unique helmets based on their role. That's the same sprue. Let's grab the third sprue, and this is the one with the shields. Right. <laughs> There's already shields. What am I talking about? It's the B sprue, at least. So we have some different leg setups. Uh, I'm not noticing much difference. I guess these are like runes or sigils that the Dwegham use doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of positioning for the heads available, sadly. Some of the shields look different. They've got different designs. You see here, this one's got like a little head. This one's got kind of a face, if that's what's going on there. Some more faces or upside down faces. Maybe they're not faces and I'm just totally saying that and now you're all going to think that, which is even better. Ha <laughs> ha, suckers. Hmm. So we have another, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven heads on this one. So there is going to be at least a fair amount of options in terms of how you want to build everybody with 12 heads. I'm not seeing lots of variations with the hand weapons. We have a thick dagger thing over here, a hacking blade right over here. That's it for the hand weapons on that screw. That's kind of surprising, actually. I don't know this one. I don't know. I never bothered to kill him. This is the ace brew. So one, two, three, four. There should be enough for everybody to have their own, what you can fill up the entire unit with hand-to-hand, -hand, or you can fill up the entire unit with the uh, crossbows. But I'm noticing there's about five or six different designs in terms of hand-to-hand -hand weapons. They're all very angular and hacky looking. So, you can probably make some interesting combinations, and hopefully I will do just that. So we're going to grab these guys. 
We're going to go spend some time looking at the directions online, and we'll get a built, and we'll show them off to you guys. And there is a QR code if you like to scan those. So do keep that in mind as well. Sit tight. We're going to get them built. And then we'll grab a whole bunch of dwarves and see how they all compare. So here you can see the first of our hold warriors is actually put together. They were fairly simple to build. You have a head, arms, shoulder pads, and usually two or three parts to make the body and a shield. Shields are completely compatible with everybody across the set, whether you're making the hold warriors or the ballista guys. Um, it doesn't matter. They're both going to use the same weapons, same arms. The only real difference is the shoulder pads. Actually, I shouldn't say same arms. Some of them you can get away with, but really, I did build one. I'm I'm disappointed with the archer guys. I when I think dwarves, I think big chunking guns, and sadly these guys don't have that. So basically, they're gonna. I didn't actually glue this yet because obviously I want to be able to have him on some textured base like material. But he'll go like that on top of his shield there. A couple other ones I built just because, and then I had to build the mohawked boss man with his extra fancy chopping blade and big, large shield. He's got a fully enclosed helmet too, which is kind of cool. I like fully enclosed helmets. I don't want to paint eyes then. I started painting some of these up. I don't have them handy, but I did try to get them started. I also built the banner bearer which is kind of a goof because if I'm understanding correctly, there is two different attachments for the standard. One is this blade, obviously for the hold warriors with their blades. And then the other is a more crossbow like set of, I don't know, the bow strands. I don't know what they're called. The top part of the crossbow. Anyway, so that's what's going to be on the standard. And the standard is quite large, and thankfully he's not too lopsided. I'm probably still going to glue something on the bottom of the base in order to keep him upright. He doesn't seem to have as much of a problem as the Nord's Raider. Now, probably what you're all wondering is just how big these guys are. Well, let's grab some dwarves and find out, because the Dwaghom are basically the dwarven faction for Parabellum's Conquest at this point. So you can see they barely go up, well I should say, the Mantic Dwarf here barely goes up to the waist of the Dwaghom. Grabbing some other Dwarves you might recognize. Same issue, still kind of on the short side. So if you're looking to mix these with other plastic ranges that are on the market, I think you're going to have a bit of a challenge. However, if you're going to be doing, like, mass combat stuff, like Kings of War, I think these guys... Oh, gosh. What were the old... The big heavy armor... The anvil born or anvil breakers or shield breaker? I don't know. The big heavy-duty armored dwarf warriors that they used to have in Warhammer. And I think there's an analogy in Kings of War. I think these would be your ultra-heavy armor dudes. They really could fit the part. And they're not that much bigger, I guess. Um, they've got a lot more girth to them. Grabbing a couple of actual Conquest Dwaghom to put in there. That is the Tempered Sorcerer, who's one of the resin models. And a wee plastic flame berserker that I was doodling around with the other day. So you can see they're all pretty much in scale with each other. So that's not really an issue. Let's see, do I have any other Conquest people handy? Just to give you guys a good idea. They do a human nord or at least as human as some of the nords are a regular human just so you guys can get a good sense of scale conquest is at its own scale but i think if you want to play around with sizes i don't think it's going to be that much of an issue along with a regular human heck you could probably get away with using these guys as some kind of northern bulky i don't know more primitive type people i i don't know i think you, if, if you're gonna get creative, you can totally find a way. I don't think they're going to really work for Frostgrave, though. There's just way too much of a difference in size. Finally grabbing a Spire Drone. Just to give you guys a good indication. So, that's about where they are in terms of size. 
height they're not a whole lot higher but their width is a lot more noticeably thicker and larger i mean if you take a look they're they're relatively close obviously the headdress of the oh gosh what are they fire slayers i think the proportions are a lot more in line smaller head if you're going to use these like with mantic i think they're going to be a better fit i'm really curious now to see how an oathmark dwarf would look next to these guys Overall, I really like the kit. I dig their weird quasi-technological vibe they've got going on. Not so much with the Hold Warriors. You can see a little bit of it with, like, the Ballista guys. It's not your usual-looking crossbow. But then it becomes a lot more apparent with the Flame Berserkers, who've got, like, just weird mechanical internal parts and face plates all slapped all over them. And they're literally on fire. Plus, they've got the big automatons, which I'm going to have to get around to eventually. They're just an interesting, interesting vibe. And they do have cannons now that I think of it, because the big dragon's got the cannons on top of it. So, hmm, maybe we'll see some more interesting range stuff for the Dwegholm in the future. But until now, it is appreciated that we have a dual kit. Sadly, it did not want to cooperate using the parts with the Flame Berserkers. The bodies just really weren't compatible, unfortunately. That was a bit disappointing. But, you know, I guess if you really want to get into hardcore kit bashing, you can. Otherwise, good solid kit. And while I continue to moan and groan about Conquest, I really am digging the models. And I find myself continuing to paint them. So, they're definitely doing something right. Whatever is irking me has not stopped me from purchasing these yet. So I guess keep doing what you're doing and hopefully we'll continue to see more new and varied and interesting stuff as the line matures and develops. So with that said, this is High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon. Bye bye.